What's going on, people? It's Hajimoto with another Umarex Gauntlet Hajification video. In this video, we're going to talk about the Gauntlet's Air Stripper, which you see here on the screen, which is my final design without the uh, shroud in place. So that's uh, let's start right at the beginning, if we can. We're going to talk a little bit about design on uh, air rifles and what a shrouded barrel is. Um, for those of you that are fully aware of everything I'm talking about, just bear with me. For those that don't, maybe you'll pick up on something on uh, what we're, what's going on here, and maybe it'll help you understand the concepts of why and, and how some of these uh, air strippers, baffles, and so forth have been put together. So this is just a generic uh, illustration that shows the rifle breech end is down here this dark section would be the metal the metal barrel of the gun and we're looking at a cutaway like if a saw was just run right down the middle of the barrel and it was cut in half and if you notice there's another uh, shell on the outside that is known as the shroud so at the end here at the muzzle end something needs to be done in order to utilize this shroud for it to help contain some of the sound um, that this would produce so when the weapon itself is fired the shroud will help lessen the sound and take some of that pressure and air and trap it in this can so to speak to reduce some of the sound air strippers themselves is another conversation what an air stripper does uh, there's argument um, on both sides of the aisle that where folks will say well what an air stripper is is to silence the weapon um, Others will say that the air stripper is so that you're increasing accuracy. And I lean towards accuracy. That's what the true job of an air stripper is. If you look at some of the high-end rifles that are put out there um, for target shooting and supreme accuracy, you'll notice there's, there's no suppressors on those rifles. It's literally an air stripper like this. You've got your projectile comes out of here, comes through this very sharp cone, which forces the air to come off the left and the right, allowing the pellet to leave smoother. Less turbulence is behind the pellet. So that's the job of the air stripper. Um, what some companies do is they'll use a air stripper like component inside the shroud um, and run it through a series of baffles so that they get less turbulent air so if we were saying that this is the path of air as it comes through you can see all the turbulence when it hits this cone i'm going to try to zoom in on this a little bit so that we can talk about this so the air path comes along this way hits the sharp edge of the cone and it's forced out these openings stripping the air the turbulent air away allowing that pellet to fly unmolested um, if this weren't in place, all of this turbulent air would be behind the pellet and it can push the skirt left, right, up, down, and it'll wobble as it leaves. The, the more laminar flow that you have of air coming through this assembly, the smoother of a flight you'll have. That's why most of the time when you have somebody that introduces a baffle set up uh, to their, their rifle, they'll actually smooth out and gain speed in doing it because they've increased the they've re reduced the turbulence so they therefore gain more feet per second there's less turbulence slowing a thing down and in these series of photographs that I'm going to show here they are really nothing more than just some of the advanced air strippers that we see on some rifles I mean some of these are pretty pretty aggressive forcing the majority of the air to come out here away from the projectile so that when it goes down range it's it's much smoother so let's talk a little bit about the inner workings of a pcp in general so you've got a huge cavity of pressure here where the mouse pointer is moving in here there's a regulator and there's a valve at this end when the hammer strikes the valve it opens high pressure air comes up into here and travels down the barrel so the magic happens at the end so Everything down in here, the mechanics of the, of the rifle, while I want to bring this up so that we understand that what we're talking about is high pressure air. So we're taking it when it's in this bottle form and it's under 200 bar, 
when it's released and comes up through here, a small amount of air is released from this bottle, but it's a large amount of air in this barrel. And the pressures are, are equally, uh, they go up pretty high. So as that pellet goes down to the other end, this is where we're going to want to talk about, which is going to be, we're going to definitely concentrate on the end of the barrel. So this is the other end, muzzle end. And this is what we'll see typically, we, the gauntlet has the same exact configuration, which is an air stripper at the end. And then it goes through a series of baffles. Now the HP baffles that I produce um, look just like this. They stack in a, in, a, in a cone configuration like this. Each one peels off some of the air, forces it between this seam, and it can then reside inside the shroud opening. And what you'll end up with is here's some composites that just kind of show what the inside, what we're going to be concentrating on is this end. In my other video, we talked about baffles, so I'm not going to repeat myself a lot on the baffles and what they do. Um, we're going to try to concentrate right here and seeing what we can do to reduce or remove as much turbulent air off of the, the as soon as it leaves the muzzle. That's what we're going to be concentrating on. So if you look, the stripper is just down from the muzzle, just downstream from the muzzle. So as that air comes by, it grabs the corners here and it's forced away like this. The air will then continue through the baffles, each one of them reducing the air even more. So now by the time that projectile goes out the end, you have a much more stable flight. So you see the void here, this outer line would be the outer skin of our, our shroud. The dark line is the barrel of the rifle. So you have this huge chamber that runs all the way back to the breech. That is nothing but a pressure chamber. There's nothing, there's no way for this to breathe. So any air that comes off and it's pulled by the stripper is trapped in here. What I've done and what a lot of folks have done over the years is you take the bottom of your shroud and you drill a hole down here on the bottom. So that when that pressure comes off the stripper and is forced into this cavity, it comes all the way back down to this end and it's allowed to weep out. So you're relieving the pressure. So essentially what you're doing is allowing the entire assembly to make this shroud become a breather. So when what I'll do is mark the shroud, put it on, tighten it on the bottom, put a small mark two inches from this end forward. Then I'll go ahead and drill, drill the hole, which is anywhere between one eighth and uh, it's like three or four millimeter drill the hole. Um, you can put three on some of my rifles. I'll have three, one on the bottom, one on each side so that this thing really breathes well. Um, when we start getting into some of the stripper configurations, depending on how um, aggressive they are, that can be uh, very important to get some of that, to get most of that air out of there. So speaking of important, the gauntlet itself, this is the way it's put together. So we see the end cap on here and we see the shroud. Now we know inside there is our barrel. And at the end, right around in here is the air stripper. Then there's a spring, a series of cones, and or and in the case of factory, it's one cigar-like cone, which is their baffle, then the cap goes on. So this is what the gauntlet configuration looks like. If this is what mine looked like when it arrived in the box, um, all brand new and as you guys remember whenever I get a gun in the first thing I do is shoot it uh, about <clears throat> I don't know 200 rounds through it to make sure that there's no major function dysfunction with the rifle After about 200 rounds or so I do what's known as a teardown I completely take the rifle apart and make sure that everything is good. No problems. Nothing's broken Doing this right here guys in Umarex's eyes will cancel your uh, Voyager warranty. If you take the rifle apart, they'll say you've voided the warranty because you took it apart. And the reason I take it apart is because at this point it's mine. It works. Um, I'm really not worried about the warranty, but I'm not saying you shouldn't be. Um, you absolutely should be. There's a three year warranty on these. And if any of these components break, it is $300. Um, that you're going to probably be throwing out the window on the rifle. So I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm not making light of the fact that warranties are je in jeopardy when you do this. I'm just saying what I did so that you don't have to risk it. I, I'm doing it. You don't have to do it. 
but I took it apart so that I could understand all the workings of this and here's our configuration right here. You can see here's the barrel of the rifle which would sit inside the shroud. At the end would be the air stripper right here then the spring, their baffle assembly and the end cap. So now that when I took this apart I noticed that the the stripper itself had issues. When I inspected it because it's a injection molded plastic there's a seam that runs down both sides and because the fit that they had it on the barrel is so tight on the barrel the plastic is slightly undersized so it fit on tight well it fits so tight that it cracks and it splits so you can see here this covers it really well and you can see there's the o-ring that would seal inside the shroud so as the air comes down the barrel it's supposed to bleed off some of the air here so it gets trapped in the shroud so that way we're taking some of the air off so that when that pellet and air go through the baffle assembly that's next in line it reduces some of the turbulence and also quiets the rifle this is front on the cracks are on the side you can't see them top you can see the cracks there i took this documentation because i wanted to make sure that uh when i doc when i contacted umarex to tell them that this was going on that they could get ahead of it uh, from a a warranty standpoint, maybe get a, an upgrade to the part. Um, when I noticed when I took it off, it looked a lot like the Marauder. So this picture is a bit out of focus, but what I did was took the Umarex gauntlet picture, and then I look, took a picture of the gaunt of the Marauder. And if you look, they are really close. I mean, they look really, really close. So what I was hoping was is that I could use a Marauder air stripper. Um, but you can't. Uh, the reason that you can't is because the Marauder is a bigger circumference. It's larger than the Gauntlet. Now this is the Gauntlet and the Marauder side by side. The barrel sizes were pretty close, but the shroud on the Marauder was definitely larger. So I couldn't use it. So I did a bunch of measurements on the, uh, the Gauntlet stripper. I'm going to go through those measurements just so that if you wanted to document them, you could because at this point my gears were spinning that if I've got to wait for something from Umarex I'm gonna see if there's something that I can't come up with so at least I'm not in a, a holding pattern and uh, and I can get the rifle working sooner so that got my my gears were, were spinning and those of you that know me uh, know that my gears spin all the time and I went into the 3d environment and I actually designed my version of a, an air stripper. And what I did was used a very tall configuration, very aggressive, multi-ports. As you can see, it's all multi-ported so that air, when it comes down through, we're gonna get real close here. You can see the air comes through, catches this, and it's ported out this way. It would be an O-ring sitting here. I went through probably 10 variations of this design, um, trying them out to try to find out which one would work best. My thought process was that if there's an O-ring right here, and as that air is stripped off, it hits the O-ring, and now these channels allow that air to come back down the shroud and all the way back to the, to the breech end to relieve the pressure. That's what these channels were for. These channels also gave rigidity to the whole structure um, and rather than just having it be a small little shoulder out here hanging off by these thin pillars, I did it that way instead. As I started to work on the design, I, I realized that if I squat, made it squatted, instead of being so long like the other, squat it down, I ended up with a much closer tolerance between when that air came out of the end of the barrel and when it went across the first cone before it left the stripper. This ended up being ultimately one of the final designs and that I went with, and this is the final piece. This is what she looks like right here. This is what I ended up with. Um, designed it, 3D'd, printed it, tried it, and when I say I tried it, I didn't want to jump the gun, so to speak, and um, put it out there too soon or start jumping up and down with a celebration. So what I ended up doing uh, is I shot 1,000 rounds through the design that I made before I counted it good. 
And that 1,000 rounds for me gave me a confidence level that it worked and it would work well. This is with my air stripper on, on the end. As you can see it's all the ports force everything back this way. Again, the shroud is off at this point. If you look here, this is after 1,000 rounds. That is uh, the silicone that I put on. You can see the gray. All that gray is lead dust. And you can see all the lead dust coming down this way. And you can actually see this is all wet here, which is an indication that as that high pressure air is coming down, hitting this cone, coming forward and being forced back down, it's using these channels and it's going back just as I intended it to. And then it goes into the baffles, the HP baffles that I've uh, made, which isn't part of this discussion. We're just going to stick uh, to the, the actual um, stripper here. Okay, so then, then now the stripper is on it. We end up with um, a much superior, much superior air stripping method here that pulls the air off and forces it back down. Now this, this particular unit is working really well. I've put it through a series of tests. Um, I'm very, very happy. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I've uh, on my f Facebook page, I do daily updates or weekly updates of things that I'm working on. Um, you're welcome to stop by and you can see the latest and greatest stuff that I'm working on um, as it's being done uh, in between videos. Um, I'll answer questions for folks. Uh, Anybody has questions on, hey, can this, hey, can that, how you make it on this, I can walk you through it. So this is mine, uh, the end designed, and I slip the shroud back over it, and I, I couldn't be happier. The thing works really, really, really well. So that being said, guys, I uh, appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. Um, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, give them a look if you wouldn't mind. I'd appreciate it. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks again for stopping by and over here on the right hand side are going to be some of my videos that have been done before. If you haven't seen them, give them a look. Take it easy, fellas.